Christianity is a dialogical religion. So it's a dialogue between God and human beings through Jesus Christ. And Jesus, in his ministry, engaged in an awful lot of dialogue. And so did his followers, the apostles, Peter and Paul and the others. Um, there's a famous dialogue between Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch where they dialogue on what is this scripture about. So we have a lot of examples and a framework. And if we can link ourselves with that kind of situation, multicultural, dialogical, um, welcoming, inclusive, encouraging, then we've got a framework to open up our own dialogues now. I think dialogue is a mutual conversation within which there are very clear parameters as to what one wants to achieve and what is actually open for dialogue. So if I'm dialoguing with someone of a different faith, uh, sometimes theological issues are not open to dialogue because dialogue could just be a conversation, but we're not going to have common ground and that's something we need to accept. Is dialogue to find common ground? There are some things we can find common ground on. Moral issues, ethical issues, issues of social justice, lots of issues. But am I going to find common ground theologically or in terms of my faith? Maybe not. And I think that's something we need to understand. As a Christian, I may, I, I'm not going to find common theological ground with a Muslim. Because for me, God is the triune God and our Lord Jesus Christ is God incarnate. For the Muslim, Isa is a prophet and a, and a revered prophet. But I'm never going to accept he's just a prophet. And my Muslim friend is never going to accept, accept that he's God incarnate. So there is no common ground on some issues. But that shouldn't stop us. Because in Egypt, for instance, we've experienced for, for, for centuries that there is realm for dialogue and interaction, cooperation on moral, ethical, political grounds as long as we know the boundaries of that dialogue. So I think that every person has an understanding of truth which may be different from the other. And so when we do finally decide that we need to live on this earth and we need to understand one another and the only way forward to create this peace and perfection is to integrate and to talk to one another and then we need to go into it respecting the other and really understanding that they may have something that we don't we may have overlook something so we could learn from the other and by learning from the other you come to know a lot about yourself as well I think the ability to listen is um, perhaps the strongest way forward for for those who would seek to dialogue. We can all talk from the rooftops if we wish um, and be full of sound and fury signifying nothing. We can, we can all talk um, but how much can we communicate? And we know we communicate best when what we say is heard and understood. We've got a better chance of being heard and understood if we know where the other one is coming from. And true dialogue, I think, is probably quite rare, uh, but true like dialogue is really quite precious. So I would have thought that the ability to listen and then the ability to speak from the heart without compromise, um, but with uh, grace and truth, would be um, a really great step forward. There are two things that we have to do all the time. One is. One is to engage with our, our neighbours, our friends, the people we meet of different faiths. But the other is to keep going back to our own faith, to our own tradition, to our own scripture, to be fully versed in, in, in our own faith. And it's like a circle, you know, you, 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 you learn your own faith, you take that into the encounter with the other person. Uh, that raises issues and questions for you. You take those back and you learn more about your own faith and then it starts again. So it's a, it's a constantly um, deepening cycle of, of learning and engagement for me. 
I think we always want to sort of think, well, if it's good for me, it must be good for you. Um, but then at the other hand, I think we have to be free. We have to respect people's choices and differences um, and level of conscience and where people are at. Dialogue is being able to share um, what you have with other people. However little a faith you have or however big a faith you have. If we don't know ourselves, how can we know God? And that's a saying we have, and I'm sure it's um, quite universal in different faiths. Um, you, to, we can all read the theory of a religion. We can all we can we can you know read the texts in our holy books. We can you know learn listen to the imam saying what he wants to say on a, on a regular basis. But actually, how do we apply that knowledge? How is the you know practice put from the theory? And I think when you meet other people, you, because you may be out of your comfort zone and you're challenged with your um, thoughts and ideas, and maybe we hold prejudices and, you know, um, and we put people into boxes and we think that actually they're like that and they're like that. So when you meet different people of different faiths, it's, it builds an understanding and, and that understanding can then only make you a, a more intense and diverse person. Um, you will be able to have more compassion towards other people. And these are all godly attributes. So um, within your own faith, these are things that take you towards God. So I would ask people to look at who their neighbours are. Who is it that lives around you? You might find that people in your congregation are already having regular cups of tea and sharing cakes with their next door Hindu neighbours. Or that the Muslims across the road bring them sweets at Christmas and maybe they give them an offering during um, Eid at Ramadan. Maybe they're already doing that. So it's kind of asking them to look around. Who are your neighbours? Who are you already engaging with? I've had people tell me they've been afraid to invite their, their Sikh neighbour to Christmas, for example. They're afraid that they're going to somehow insult them. And I said, no, no, you're not going to insult them. You'll actually make them feel that they're a part of, of you, that they're a part of what you care about. I think throughout the Gospels, Jesus is shown as going out and meeting people uh, where they are, uh, not just his fellow Jews, but going into the places like Samaria and the, the fringe cities of the Roman Empire, uh, where he can be with people on their own terms. And I think, therefore, that's something that is important to us, that uh, we we don't always have to invite people into our space to dialogue with them. We can actually go into their space, their home territory, and, and have those conversations. And sometimes I think Christians can be very fearful of uh, going into other people's spaces. It's not so long ago that uh, a Roman Catholic wouldn't dream of setting foot in a Protestant church or an Anglican going into a Methodist church or all of those things thankfully, have long since passed. And we are now much more comfortable and at ease in just welcoming other people's space as well as the people who occupy that space. And that, that can only be for the, for the good.